five o'clock on a Wednesday, which means it's time for Craig and Ryland's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. Welcome back to another review show. We've got some brand new items to look at this I week. I got the good tricks. I he has tricks. he has got some really good tricks this week. Uh, there's some really interesting products that are lined up on this week's show. I think you're going to be really excited. Uh, so guys, before we start the show, please remember to subscribe to the channel. That would be absolutely amazing. But without further ado, let's get straight into the first review. Okay, so the first trick we're going to be looking at this week is this. Now, this is the Mini Cups and Balls. Now, a couple of Mini Cups and Balls came out at the same time. Uh, the TCC Cups came out, and these Cups came out. And there's a, uh, there's a difference between the two of them. And the main difference is these Cups that we're going to be reviewing have a few key advantages and a few key benefits over any other Mini Cups and Balls set. And we're going to go through what those advantages it's got are. Chop cups in. Yeah, we're going to go through it. It's got chop cup built in. It's got a whole bunch of stuff built into it. We're going to so go everything. through. We got. We're going to go through all of that for you. But I thought you could do a very quick sort of performance. Don't have to do a full yeah. thing, but yeah. do a very quick performance, just showing what. What are we for? Huh? Should we do what are we for? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So yeah. we're going to get Ryan to do a quick performance of this. Quickly. Yeah. Mm, got it. Okay, and then we're going to go into the review. I've got three cups and three balls. Look. I'll hold that for you. Yeah, okay. Three balls, three cups. Here's three balls. One, two, three. And three cups. Okay. Okay. Three cups, three balls. Three cups, three balls. I'm going to put them all there. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to make them disappear one by one. First one. Goes. Nice. Second one. Goes. Very nice. Third one. Goes. Where'd it go? Well, if I tap it with my finger, mm -hmm. watch. First one. Second one. Third one. That's very cool. I like that. Yeah? Yeah? Look, now maybe you think I was cheating. Uh, you I know what? I do, I do think you were cheating. But I wasn't. Yeah, you were and cheating. To prove it, I'll just put them under the cup so I can't even touch them. Like that. Okay, so one under each cup. Yeah, one under each cup. Okay. And if I tap, tap, and tap, mm -hmm. that's the first one. <laughs> the second one's gone as well. And they're all under that one middle cup. That's incredible. Do you know what? What? Watch this. We'll put these all here. Okay. And we'll put them in line and we'll go. And we'll make them penetrate. That would be the first one. And that's got solid. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Look, we'll do the next one. Tap. That's incredible. That's the next one. And we'll do the last one. Okay. Boom. That's brilliant. That's awesome. Now, do you want to know what happens when I put one in my pocket? I'd love to know. Watch. I put it in my pocket. You haven't got pockets, so you're going to put it over there? Yeah. Well, if I put it over there, it goes under there. No way! Look, I'll just put these over there as well. Okay. And I'll stack these up. Okay? Yeah. Now, okay, so that means you can't see anything in there, can Hang you? Hang on. There is nothing in that one, no. There's nothing in that one. What about in this one? Nothing. Nothing in that one. Nothing in that one. What's in this one? Nothing in that one either. Nothing in that one. Then if I snap... I get a bunch of sweets and the real look. <laughs> the real. You can eat them. You can have some with them. That's brilliant. Okay, right, that was a really good performance. I mean, Ryland actually does the cups and balls. You do the full Di Vernon and Michael Amar routine, don't you? Yeah. I suppose before we start a review, let me ask you a question because you've been working with these more than me. Yeah. Do you find it harder? Or to work with compared to a, a full size cups and balls set, or is it easier, or what's the difference? Um, well, if you do like the same routine, like the beginning, like mm -hmm. what I did, it's a bit hard. Why? Because like loading is the hard part, like when you're loading. Is that because you're not used to loading these size, and if you yeah, worked with yeah, them, that's, that... that's the problem. Because you're used to using like a full size TCC and cups. I, and there's something better, like it will it. It might not happen, but it'll sometimes happen when you like with with like the chop cup built into it. Yeah. Sometimes like the ball will stick to the cup because it's like a it's like a magnetic ball with a magnetic cup. Mm -hmm. There's only one magnetic ball with one magnetic cup. 
But if you do get that, it's like it hasn't gone yet, so you can go and then you slam it and then, and then it will come out sometimes. Um, well, yeah. here's the thing. You, you could probably routine it to take advantage of that if you want to. All Ryland did was took the Michael Lamar routine, skipped the last two phases and just did the did the Michael Lamar routine there. So first of all, they're very well made. Uh, they look like classic cups, they've just shrunk down, but they are really well made. Uh, they're absolutely gonna last a lifetime. Like Ryland said, uh, the cups are really, the cups are really small. Um, I, Ryland didn't have too much of an issue with this, but I had a real problem doing that kind of loading sequence that you see with the classic Vernon routine. Um, it's okay. You wanted it to, But I found it a little to bit it tough. Like yeah, I was trying to like initially doing it like that, and that looked dodgy. I've been practicing it a little bit now. I'm a little bit better at it, but I'm still not. Uh, I'm still not perfect. Um, but it, I think that'll just come with time. I think if you're used to using a full size cup set, um, switching over to this cup set, some of the moves will feel a little I bit like alien. Shell. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. So first of all, like Ryland said, one of the cups. I don't know which one now. Can you find the cup for me? One of the cups, can you figure out which one it is? Magnetic. One of the cups is a chop cup and has a chop ball. Now, if you don't know what chop cup is, if you don't know what chop ball is, uh, basically the cup is magnetic and the ball, add that one there, yeah? The cup is magnetic and the ball is magnetic. Now, we haven't really explored the chop function of this yet. I have kind of played could, around with it. You could actually do a chop cup because you've got the magnetic cup. Magnetic ball, and you've got an electrical. Yeah, so you could go into you a chop cup routine. Chop it's not a bad, you know, uh, one of my pet hates when it comes to chop cups is when you have a chop cup and you have to bang it really hard to dislodge it. That's not the case with this. No, it's it's easy. yeah, you, you, it's, it's easy. just it's just put it down like that a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah, you put it down like that and it'll come out. As I say, I haven't really experimented with it, but it's not so bad. So any chop cup routine that you do, you can do with this. So you Except can have the, the cup and the pom pom, but you could do that without the pom pom. Yeah. So. You get it, you get it. Oh, you're talking about Tommy Wonders? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay. She's got two cups. So that's good. The other thing that's quite nice about it is it's got an insert. It's got a shell. Shell. Um, which we you use can use that for our big finale. Yeah, you can use oh, this. I use it. And I think it's worth pointing this out. And they did talk about this on the trailer, so I don't think I'm giving too much away here. Um, but what this is nice for is if you're going to do a final load, especially in sort of a restaurant-style environment, you, uh, want, you could have salt you in here, have you could have anything. Food or exactly. Little pieces of chicken. You can have that. Now, obviously, if you're having loose stuff in here and you have it in your pocket, it could it, jangle around. Yeah. So there's a couple of different solutions to this. First of all, have it in the ticket pocket of your... Uh, of your uh, your jeans or whatever if you're wearing jeans or uh, you can have it tucked into your belt strap and that would work absolutely yeah, fine. fine or you could get like a holder unless you like, unless you like jumping up and down. but the nice thing about this is it's very different to a normal load so you can show each one of these cups has been completely which empty which Ryland did in the routine you can show each one of these cups is completely empty and then you can just, tip it then you can just make all of the in this case sweets appear um, so, so that's a nice Let's benefit to it as well uh, Quality is good. Uh, you know what? For, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the cups and balls. I'm going to give it 100%. I knew you would. I love the cups no, and balls. Will you shut up for a minute? I love the cups and balls. Always have done. I, I use it to close my parlour show. I've used it in cabaret enough times. It's really good. It's not something I've ever taken to a uh, sort of a, a close-up job or I've ever taken to sort of a, a table hopping job or a wedding or a corporate event just because I haven't got the space to carry the three cups around with me and also the three or four massive final loads that I'm going to have to take. But this is really nice because you just literally put this here in the bag you just have your final load somewhere and, and you're good to go. It doesn't take up very much space. Um, the chop cup especially. Didn't Murphy's do this? Uh, it's distributed through Murphy's. Um, yeah, it's distributed through Murphy's. It's not a Murphy's item. It's distributed yeah. through Murphy's. Uh, if you don't like the shell that they use for the final load, you can obviously substitute this for whatever final loads that you want to use. The other thing, if anybody don't knows... Need to use the shell. Hmm, if anybody knows Gary Jones's fire cups routine... These are absolutely brilliant for Gary Jones's fire cups routine. So if you've got fire cups, which he released, I think, through the Full 52 company, David Froze Full 52 company, if you know his fire cups routine, these are great for fire cups, which is a routine where you need three cups and you're using little pieces of tissue paper to do the trick. And the nice thing about that is the final load is in play from the very, very beginning of the routine. Uh, and all of the balls disappear at the end in a burst of fire, and then you've got your final load. This works great for the fire cups routine. It doesn't take up too much space in your pocket, so you can now go and do a full cups and balls set 
with something that will literally just fit in your shirt pocket, which is great. And even if you aren't going to use the shell and you're going to use three final loads, the loads that would need to be put in here, you could just use little like rubber balls. Yeah. Uh, the sort of ones that I use for the three ball routine would work absolutely fine. Um, and that doesn't take up hard, hardly so, any pocket space at all. You use salt? It's great. I really love it. I was worried that the I was worried that it wouldn't be very good and be very poorly made, but it's very well made. And um, I'm gonna give this one a nine The only thing that you need to consider is if you use cups and balls and you use a chop cup, it's I do going cups to. And balls. You do, yeah, and and I'm sure I'm cup. sure you're going to agree. Well, you still got one. I think I'm going to agree with this but statement. It's... Did it? Yeah. We'll talk about that. You blew, you broke a chop cup. Forget it, we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> the, thing, the thing about this is you are going to have to put some time in to relearn some of the moves with smaller props. I mean, the, the, if you're used to using chop cup, if you're used to using cups and balls, you are gonna have to put some practice in because the moves feel a little bit alien with these cups, but you were playing with these all day yesterday yeah. and then you kind of got it down. And, and, and this morning. And this morning, and it wasn't a problem. Well, um, so there you go. I'm going to give this 95%. I think these are really good. I think these are priced very competitively. 115% from him, 95% from me, priced very competitively. And uh, yeah, I mean, the chop cup especially is very well made. I can see people doing an in-the-hands chop cup routine. You could even, the size of the cups, you could even produce the cups. I mean, you could even produce the chop cup, produce the ball. I mean, there's so many different yeah. options. So yeah, highly recommended. And they're available from your favorite magic dealer. Okay, so the next trick we have is Petroleum, marketed by Theory11 by a guy called Max Lukin. Um, petroleum is a new trick from Theory11. It is a gaffed deck that is going to allow you to perform what the guys at Theory11 say is the cleanest triumph routine you will ever see, uh, which is a very bold statement. And, uh, you know, you get the deck, you get a one hour download. I've never seen Max Lukin before. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a young guy, uh, but he's very eloquent on the download. He is an incredible teacher. He goes through everything in great detail, but he doesn't do one of these things that I see some lecturers do, where he kind of goes on and labors the point too much. Uh, he explains it clearly, but he doesn't waffle, which I think is really important. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a few different things that you can do with this deck. And there's a few different ways that Max explains about how you can handle it and how you can use it. Uh, but in essence, what we have here is a triumph routine. So I'm going to perform the basic routine for you now, Ryland. So I'm going to perform the basic routine, show you what the triumph looks like, and then we'll, we'll give it a review. Does that yeah. sound good? Yeah. Okay, Ryan, I've got a trick with a pack of cards here. Okay? okay. Yeah. Uh, 52 playing cards and more importantly, 52 possibilities in this deck, buddy. Uh, you are going to pick one of these cards, okay? And you can have any one you can want to. I'm completely indifferent to the choice you're about to make, but I want it to be completely at random. So I'm going to riffle down the deck like this to say stop. Oh. There, you yeah. sure? Yeah. Have a look at that card. Remember it, don't forget it. Show the camera. Do not show me I cheat for a living. Are we good? Yeah. Good stuff. So I'm going to spread through the cards. Pass me the card. Don't let me see it. And uh, just say stop. Stop. Right there? Yeah. Nice. We're going to leave it down in the deck. How's that sound? Sound fair? Yeah. So now I have to try and find your card, which is kind of tricky because I don't know what your card is. I have no idea what your card is. I have no idea where your card is, but I am going to try <laughs> my absolute best to find your card. But before I do, I'm going to give the deck a cut. I'm going to cut the deck in a about half that's about half right yeah. and I'm going to turn half the cards face up half the cards face down and I'm going to shuffle the cards face up into face down there's a technical term for this it's called a mess, mess. It's, it is very very messy because if you look at this right now you'll see that there's cards oh, no. face up and face down they're all they're all they're all mixed up I mean they, they are literally all mixed up yes, yes. Um, I have to try and sort your cards out um, sort all the cards out. Now, how long would it take you, do you think, to sort all the cards out so they're all facing the right way? A very long time. I'm going to sort them out in one second and find your card. Are you ready? Yeah. Watch this. Done. Because now all of the cards are facing the right way, except for one card right there in the middle of the deck. And hopefully, if I've got it right, <coughs> that one card right there would be the King of Clubs. Was that your card? Brilliant. 
So there you go, that is a performance of uh, Petroleum by, uh, by Max Lukin. The first thing I'm going to say is that is an incredibly clean triumph. Now, I said that on the download, Max goes through a whole bunch of different handlings. He talks about very, he talks about so many different ways of accomplishing this effect. And he talks about different ways of handling the deck and different ways of using the deck. What you have here is kind of like, I think the best way to describe this is cheek to cheek on steroids. If you know the original cheek to cheek deck, and I've got quite a lot of work on the cheek to cheek deck. This is like cheek to cheek on, on steroids because what it allows you to do, as you saw in the, uh, as you saw in the performance, it allows you to show all the cards face down, flip them over, show the cards face up, <coughs> excuse me. It then allows you to shuffle the cards and show them mixed from both sides. And yet any time that you want to, you can sort all the cards out so they're all facing the right way. Um, and it is very, very clean. Now there's a few things that I wanna point out. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a second routine on there, which is kind of like a very odd version of oil and water, but with face up and face down cards. So it's a three phase routine. You take eight cards out the pack, out the deck, and you mix them up face up and face down, and then they separate. So all the face up cards and all the face down cards separate. You do that again, and then you take the deck and you shuffle it. And rather than being a triumph style thing, where all of the deck turns face down, he ends up with all of the cards separating. So you've got all face up cards and all face down cards, which I thought was a really clever routine. Is it? Huh? Huh? Clever. I thought it was really clever. I really like that. I actually thought that was maybe in some ways better than oil and water. And that for me was the standout trick on this project, to be perfectly honest. Um, I really like that. Although I like this as a triumph, I actually really preferred that version. And, and Max even talks about how you can do that oil and water style thing with face up, face down cards. And then when all of the cards have separated face up and face down, they're, they've separated into face up cards and face down cards, you can then go into a normal triumph and show that they've all turned face down again very clever i mean really clever um a few things that i took exception to i hope you don't mind me talking about this yeah. so the first thing is um there was a moment max talks about lots of different ways of sorting the deck out when you get to the point that you need to sort the deck out and he talks about um one particular way which is using a cardini change cardini color change uh, in order to affect a visual change of, of the deck so you show that it's face up face down you just wave your hand over, they all turn face up, and then he spreads them out and shows them all sorted. Then he says, I'm not going to explain the Cardini change. You can, you can, you know, you can learn it from any other place that you want to. Heck, there's even a few tutorials on YouTube. And I take exception to that. And the reason I take exception to that is if you are offering a product and people are spending money on this product, which they are, they're spending like $30 or whatever it is. If people are spending money on this product, I, I believe that you should give them all the information that they need in order to do every handling that you offer to them. And if you think that, and, and Max does talk about how his favorite approach is using a Cardini change. If you think that that's your favorite approach and that's the way that a lot of people should do it, you should teach that on the project. It's not fair to have someone spend yeah. a whole bunch of money and then not be able to do what they need in order to do your preferred handling. And I can't imagine it's because you haven't got the rights to teach the Cardini state, uh, change because you then go and say, check it out on YouTube. But the problem with checking out on YouTube is you might find somebody who teaches it incorrectly. You might find somebody who teaches it wrong. And I think that if you... If, so if you haven't got the rights to teach the Cardini steel, don't include it on the project and come up with another method of doing it. And if you have got the rights then teach it because it's not fair for somebody to spend money on a product and then how frustrated would you be if you got this and then you were like all oh, right okay i need to do that oh that, and then you don't get to learn it i mean that'd be terrible right yeah. so that's my first issue with that um and and you know just wanted to make you aware of it because obviously if you don't know the card any change that's max's favorite way of doing it the other thing that I've been wrestling with, and I don't know the answer to this, I really don't know the answer, and we haven't talked about this, so I'm gonna ask you now. I do a lot of different sh versions of Triumph with a regular deck of cards. Like, I do versions of Triumph with, with uh, lots of different ways, gimmick decks and regular decks, but I do lots of different versions of Triumph with a regular deck of cards. <laughs> this trick, once you've done 
what you just saw me do, once you've done the triumph or you do the oil and water, or whatever it is, you can't then use the deck straight away. You have to reset it. Now, it's probably only going to take about 60 seconds to reset, but you can't do it in front of the audience. You're going to have to go somewhere. You're going to have to take the cards, sort them out. It'll take about 60 seconds to reset it. Also, the deck cannot be examined. There's handlings to do it in the hands and there's handlings to do it on the table. So that's not an issue. You can do it in any environment, but the deck cannot be examined at the end. Not even a little bit, not even remotely. Um, and I'm trying to decide whether that's an issue or not. And part of me, and I want to know what you think, part of me thinks, but Craig, you've done cheek to cheek for years and you've never had a problem with it and people haven't wanted you examining the deck. Um, and that's not as clean as this version. But then part of me thinks, yeah, that's true, but I could go and do Triumph with a regular deck of cards. And I don't think, if, if Max went out and did this, to an audience, and then I went out and I did my triumph that I put on Slim, Rocky's Triumph, which ends up with a four of a kind production, which leaves me with a regular deck of cards because I'm using a regular deck of cards. I don't think many laymen would say, if any, would say, well, hang on a second, um, the first version was a little bit cleaner. We were more convinced that the cards were shuffled face up into face down. I don't, I don't think that'd be the case. So my big question, what do you think, is... Is this a strong enough effect to warrant the use of a gimmick deck? Do you understand what I'm saying? No. You don't get what I mean. So this uses a gimmick pack of cards, right? Yeah. The deck can't be examined. Yeah. I can do exactly the same trick with a regular deck of cards. Okay. So I could do this trick with a regular deck of cards right now. But it could be examined at the end. I wouldn't need to worry about a reset because it's a regular deck of cards. I could incorporate it any time I want to into my act because I could just do an ambitious card, for example. Do this, do that, do an ace production. Then I can go into my triumph because it's the same regular deck of cards. Whilst with this, if I want to do this trick in the middle of a card set, I'm going to have to switch a regular deck in, switch the regular deck out, switch it back in again. Or I'm going to have to present this as a standalone effect. Now, this is a little bit cleaner. The displays are cleaner than any Triumph I've seen with a regular deck of cards. They are. You can't, with a, with a normal Triumph, spread the cards out face up and face down and show that they're mixed on both sides of the spread. So this is cleaner, but it can't be examined at all. If the spectators want to examine the deck, it can't be examined. So my question is, is it worth doing this trick when you can do the same trick with a regular deck of cards? No. You don't think so? You understand the question I'm asking now? Because I don't know the answer. This is clever. Don't get me wrong. This is clever. I really like this. I think that the handling is clever. I think that it's a massive creative leap forward with how the deck is designed compared to any other Triumph I've seen that uses gimmicks. It's a massive creative step forward. But, you know, I mean, for example, let me give. it doesn't add anything to Triumph. It doesn't add anything. Let me give you an example. So I perform Shake and Bake by, uh, by Steve Bedwell, which if you don't know what Shake and Bake is, it's a uh, triumph routine with an invisible deck. And what makes it so good is they can name the card. They can freely name the card. Once the cards have apparently been shuffled face up into face down, and you do that, the spectator does the shuffling sequence for you, you don't have to do it. And be, you can do it on stage. It works really well on stage. The spectator shuffles the cards for you. You then say, name a card, and you reach in and have sorted all out except for one card. That, for me, adds something to the triumph because it's a named card. The spectator's doing the shuffling, and there's this really funny visual moment of, of well, I'm not going to go into the routine, but it's, it's, it, it adds something. It's one that I actually do in a stand-up show. So that adds something to Triumph. This doesn't add anything to Triumph other than the oil and water thing. I think that actually adds something to it because I love the idea of doing oil and water with face-up, face-down cards. And the two first two phases with, with packet tricks, you get the extra cards to do that, by the way. So the first two phases, which is like packet trick style stuff, that, that looks absolutely incredible. And then the final phase... It just makes sense. It's really good. And again, it can't be examined, but at least it's a creative leap forward in terms of the impact on the audience. So I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking this and I know I've been doing all of the talking in this review and I'm really sorry, but I don't know. I'm conflicted. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I want to say that I'm going to do it, but I don't think I am. I don't think I am because I think when I get to a gig, 
I'm going to have my invisible deck with me. I know I'll have that. I'm going to have probably my regular deck. I might have a mem deck. You, you guys know that when I approach a close-up job, I take what I think is best for the environment. I don't think that I'm going to be taking this because I'm going to go, I'll, I might have it with me and go, I'll do that on a hang-up. I've got so much lack of pocket space and, you know, I can do that with a regular deck of cards. I won't, I'm like, no, I'll leave that. I don't think I'm ever going to do it. I think it's a creative leap forward. I think it's very clever. I'm not going to do it, so I'm going to give it 79%. What about you? I'm going to keep it 79 as well. 79 as well. You're not going to do it. Well, you do. Uh, he does uh, John Carey's um, Invisible Triumph, don't you? He does John Carey's Invisible Triumph, which is an almost self-working version of Triumph. It's absolutely incredible. And it also happens to be on Netflix, just saying. Um, but you do Invisible Triumph, don't you? Which yeah. is a regular deck of cards. So you'd rather do that than this? Yeah? I know what you mean. Um, yeah, 79% from him, 79% from me. I am going to do this on a Magic Live, though. Don't get me wrong, it's clever. And yeah, if you it's do... Clever. It's clever. It's good. Visually, it's stunning. It's not a Zen book. Not... you might get some... Well, I would want to examine it. That's why I asked. And you performed it. Yeah, I performed it to him and he wanted to examine it. And I was like, but that's because you're an irritating little annoying sausage. Um, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I like it. I'm just not going to do it. Okay, so next up we have Celeb Celebrity. Celebrity by Matthew Wright, one of my favourite magicians. And this is the revelation of a thought of superhero on a key, which sounds absolutely bonkers. It is absolutely bonkers. Um, Ryland loves it because it's so bonkers. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, we, it really is. We're going to go through. Uh, we're going to go through what we think of this, the pros and the cons. But first of all, do you want to give a performance of this? You want to yeah. go? Yeah. So Ryland's going to perform this, and then we're going to talk about what we think. Not you. I'll perform it. Okay. I've got this key here. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to hold your hand up like that. Okay. Okay. Now I'm just going to put that key there. Okay. I want you to hold it tight and turn your hand over and push it out a bit that way. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Now, I've also got this book over here. I've also got this book over here. Okay. Okay, now it's about the top... You have to turn it around so you can 50, show the camera. And it's about the top 50 superheroes, okay? Okay. So like, we've got lots of different ones. We've got, like, Spider-Man. We've got... Wonder um, Woman. Woman. Wonder Woman. We've got... Luke Cage. Luke Cage. You've got, I, think, I don't know his name. Hyperion. Hyperion. You've got Hulk. Mm -hmm. You've got lots of different ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah? it. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is I want you, with that hand, to just go and look at that, whatever that one is. Okay. Don't you look then. I've got it. Okay, I've got it. Yeah. i got someone. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to put this book back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, what? If I just take this key and pull it out. What? Batman. I was thinking of Batman. That is who I was thinking of. I was thinking of Batman. That is incredible. Right. That is yes, I was thinking of Batman. That's incredible. Batman. Look at that, it's Batman! Little Batman. It's Batman! How did you do that? That's so cool. So that is Celebrity. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I first saw this, and I first saw the trailer for this, I was like, that sounds rubbish. I'll be honest. I was like, so clever. I, I, Ryan loves it. I think it's pretty cool. It's an interesting revelation of, of, a, um, of a superhero. It really is. Now, just to tell you what you get, um, you get two really well-made keys. Don't talk um, about what? I'm not going to talk about how it works, but you get two really well-made keys. Um, and the whole idea is that you can have one of those keys hanging on your keychain, which makes it like an everyday carry type thing. And uh, you can take the key off, you can give it them. Um, they can see it's a normal key, they hold it in their hands. When they take it out, it becomes Batman. And then the other key is to switch in at the end so everything's examinable. And then when you're finished, you just put the, um, you know, as you walk away, you just put that key back in your pocket and you put the celebrity key. Uh, the gimmick back on your keychain and you are ready to go again um so that's basically what you get in the package you get two key uh, you get two keys you also get a really well 
um, uh, presented tutorial by Matthew Wright, who goes into everything in great detail, doesn't he? He talks about everything. He talks about various different ways of switching the keys. You don't have to switch the keys if you don't want to. You can just show it, but I think people would want to examine this. So you want to switch it, and you just did a simple shuttle pass when you yeah. performed it, didn't you? Uh, and there's no heat on the switch, by the way, just in case you're wondering. There's no heat on the switch because you've just had this Batman thing that the keys just turn into Batman. Um, crazy. It is just crazy. At, at that point, everyone's on the offbeat and you can do the switch easily. He also talks about forces. Now, um, you can force this in any way you want to. If you want to make it part of your everyday carry. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a second. You can tell everyone about that. Um, um, he talks about using digital force bag, which would make it perfect for an everyday carry. He actually uses a pack of top trumps cards. So with all different superheroes in, and he teaches you a whole bunch of different ways to force a card from a pack of top trumps. Um, he, um, he actually pr pr uh, explains a new force he's come up with recently called the socially distanced force, which was really interesting. But Ryland is planning on doing this, aren't you? Yes. In your show. Yeah. And you actually use this book. Now, this book, I Ryland... This book. Go on, talk about the book. We reviewed this on the show a little while I ago. I use this book for when... Um, dress code. Yeah, I use this book for dress code. Ryland does dress code in his show. So to open up his and show... I, and I force Batman. Yeah, so to force and, his... like, it's a force on, like, you've got, like, all the different superheroes and then... Yeah, you've got you've just got all Batman. Batman. This is this is really nice. This is a this is a well, we got this from Murphy's. We reviewed this on a show a little while ago. It's very well made. Ryland uses it in the opening of his show. He does dress code by Kayla Morelli. He has someone think of a superhero, and when he does dress code, he's got a Batman T-shirt on, haven't you? Which is killer, absolutely killer. Um, so this is a nice way to force it. Obviously, you wouldn't want to carry this around with you. Walk around. <laughs> I'm just going <clears> to <throat> walk up to a group. Hi, can you hold my book for me for a minute? Um, but if you're doing this as kind of a feature of your act, and then this is absolutely something that you could use. Yeah, I'm going to um, give this 100%. You're going to give it 100%? No, 90. Let me 98. Can I explain why I thought this was going to be rubbish? I thought this was going to be rubbish because... <laughs> I, just because, I mean, the whole idea of a key turning into a, a superhero just seemed a bit weird to me. Like, but, did you think it was like the key was actually going to turn into a golden superhero? No, of course not. I just thought it might. It sounded a bit naff when I when I. Yeah, it, it sounds sound a bit naff. It sounded then, a bit naff, but, but then, then when he actually did it, man, yeah, you see the reactions on the download, and the reactions are great. And I was thinking when I first saw this key. I was like, wouldn't it be much better if it was more subtle and it was just like a silhouette of Batman with the cuts instead of actually having a 3D printed Batman? And then I was like, nah, you want it in their face. I mean, the fact that they're holding onto this key and they can see it's a normal key. And then when you take it out, it's got a Batman image on it. It's like, wow, that is cool. I mean, that is so cool um and it really is i think you've got to be aware of a couple of things here number one be aware of the fact that there is only one revelation so if you're doing this over and over again you want to be careful at one event because it's not like you're going to be able to vary this and have superman on one and batman on the other that's something to bear in mind if they keep on talking about it like the magician did this and this and this i i got batman i got batman i got batman as well i got batman too they're going to see, realize that you're doing something a bit dodgy aren't they yeah. So you want to be a caref careful of that and aware of that. The other thing is... That you only want to do like two tables. The other thing is... It. Yeah, that's actually really sensible. The two other th tables or one. One or two tables. The other thing is they've built some forces into the actual top of the key. So they've got a uh, they've got a circle inside a triangle for anybody who does that psychological force. You've got the number 10, 1089 built into there as well. You've got a Q and a H or a Queen of Hearts. And then you've got the number 1041930. Uh, Nine, which is the year that the very first Batman, the what? date of the very first Batman uh, comic came out. One o four one nine three nine. Yeah, so nineteen thirty nine, tenth of April, nineteen thirty nine. The first Batman comic came out. So I mean, you could he, uh, Matthew Wright talks That's about how you can. Before. Well, he told he talks about how you can use toxic to force a number. You give them the key. Toxic. Uh, toxic, you know the calculator force. Oh yeah. Um, so he gives uh, he gives somebody the key once Batman's there, and he gets somebody to force a. Uh, a, a he uses a calculator to force um, to, to force this number, and then he get uh, and then he gets them to Google when the first Batman comic came out, and the date's there, and then the date matches the calculator, and then when they look at the key, that's the same number on there as well. So that's that's a nice little extra bonus thing if you want to do after that. Um, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Queen of Hearts. 
Yeah, you can do the Queen of France as well. Let's be honest, it's it's a really nice everyday carry item. I think that the challenge with close-up magic is doing something that's a little bit different, a little bit unique, a little bit out of the ordinary, and that's what you've got here. Think about the positives. It's really easy to do. Um, there's almost no skill. There's lots of different ways you can do the switch at the end very, very easily. But outside of the switch, there's no skill at all. There's lots of different ways that you can present it. Um, it the magic happens in the spectator's hands. Uh, it's examinable and it's an almost instant reset and it works well as part of your everyday carry um, which you know let's be honest these days everyone's talking about their everyday carry well this is great you just put this on your keychain and anytime you want to go into this routine you just take this off your keychain and you go into it um, just be aware that you need to pick somebody at least that's got a passing interest in superheroes I, I do a lot of magic with superheroes because I'm a huge superhero fan you and me uh, we both like superheroes. We're more, Marvel. We're more, we're more Marvel than DC, to be honest. Yeah. But I remember performing a trick that I uh, that I do where I had, you know, that trick I do where the coin turns into Iron Man. Yeah. And you've got Iron Man on the coin, right? Yeah. I did this trick on somebody at a gig once, and I had them think of a superhero, and they ended up thinking of Iron Man, and they were holding onto this coin, and when the coin, their hand opened up, uh, Iron Man was printed on the coin on both sides, and they were like, "Oh, is that Iron Man? I've never seen that. Never seen it. Never seen it before." And it just killed it dead, it absolutely killed it dead. So at least make sure that the person that you're actually performing for is aware of superheroes. Don't just blindly go into this. I think, oh, you know, right. you know, can you recognize one superhero from the other? You can, okay, cool. Um, because if, they, if you do this key thing in their hand and then they go, oh, is that Batman, is it? Oh, okay, oh, right, okay, I'll take your word for it. Um, immediately, you've, you know, you've, you've just completely lost it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to give this, this is going to go on my keychain. This is going to be part of my everyday carry. Did that yeah, it did. Yeah, for sure. It's a nightmare. Um, Cy Pedal was with me at the time. Uh, it was at a gig that we were doing together. Anyway, I'm going to give this 90%. Uh, I'm going to do this. I think I, I like anything that happens in the spectator's hands. And I think this has got what I like to call that sponge balls moment. Uh, you know that moment where you open up the spectator's hands and there's two balls there instead of one? and people freak out because they're convinced there's one ball in there. They open up the hand, there's two balls. This has that same sponge balls moment to it. You open up the hand and now that key has changed into a superhero and they can see it there and it's happened in their hand and then immediately you hand it out for examination. Yeah. I like it, I think it's commercial. As long as you do the switch before. As long as you do the switch. Um, Here you go. 90% from me, what about you? What did you say, 98% did yeah, you say? 90. 98% from Ryland, 90% from me. It is highly recommended. And as for this book, you can get that from all good magic dealers. Okay, so next up we have a Surprise Change by Gustav Raleigh. Uh, he's been bringing out a lot of stuff recently. Um, this, is, this is his next item. So what is Surprise Change? Surprise Change basically is... I really like it. I know you love this, don't you? So what Surprise Change is, is you show a dollar bill and you fold it in half lengthways, you hold the dollar bill here, you snap your fingers, and when you do, it turns into a Kinder Egg, uh, and, and it looks really visual when you do this change. You can't really palm it, so you're gonna have to do it. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you need to bear in mind. If you can't palm the Kinder Egg, then... His, his hands are decent sized, but they're, they're still... They're like this big. Yeah, it's it's quite a big it's quite a big Kinder Egg to be honest. So he's he could he he wanted to do this trick, but he can't. Luckily, I've got fairly big hands. Uh, adult, anyone? Uh, yeah, I, well, I'm going to. I'm going to perform it for them in a second. Yeah, but that's something that you need to bear in mind. I'm going to perform it for you right now. There are there are some cons with this, and there are also some pros. So I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons in a second. Uh, but first of all, let me just show you the routine. It's very quick, so let me go and perform that for you now. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to do something with a dollar bill, okay? okay? I'm just going to fold that dollar bill in half. Is that fair? Yeah. Now, I want you to watch and don't blink. It's going to happen on three. You ready for this? Yeah. One, two, three. It looks like it disappears, but it doesn't. That dollar bill turns right there into a Kinder Egg. Uh, but obviously, it's not real. It's just in our imagination. So that is Kinder Surprise. And I think one of the big... I know you do. Well, you can practice it and do it on your YouTube channel. How's that sound, yeah? Yeah. Um, here's the thing. One of the big advantages of this trick is the visual nature of it. When you show that dollar bill folded like that and then you just snap and it turns into a Kinder Egg, that moment, it almost looks like CGI. It looks really good. So that's the first thing that to, to consider. That's the first pro. Now, now, there's a couple of cons with this. The first con is 
you have to use the dollar bill or maybe you could change it there's no information on the download as to how to actually adapt this gimmick to your own currency um and i think the reason is i think you'd not be able to adapt it to your own currency over here in the uk we use the polymer notes and they're see-through in certain sections they aren't going to work with this uh that they're just not going to work so with the dollar bill in america i mean it's great you can just take it out your wallet show it and boom change it and job done in in england you're going to have to have a reason why you've got that dollar bill with you why are you using an american note which can be obviously you can actually do that but it's something to take into consideration the other thing is i really don't think this is a close-up trick I really don't. The trailer puts across that this is perfect for close-up. Oh, uh. I really don't think it is because at the end, first of all, there's the angle issues angles, to consider. Yes, you got you got this big egg that's palmed in your hand that covers your whole hand. You're then going to have to take out the dollar bill and fold it up, and you can't see that from behind either. You, you from behind, you're absolutely messed up. Yeah. From the side, you you With kind the egg, of it. The side of the egg, you still don't. Yeah, exactly. Unless you like that. Then you do the change. But then you got people. Then you do the change. Once you've done the change, that egg cannot be examined. Yep. Like even close to being examined. Unless you switch it for a giant egg. Well, that, what it they has to be a giant egg if you switch well, it. Well, yeah. What they suggest in the download is that you reach into your back pocket, and the download's like six minutes long, so they're not going to this in any detail at all. But while you're showing this egg, reach in and grab a duplicate egg, and do a shuttle pass. But again, I just think that's the wrong time to do Can a switch. You really get an egg that big? Yeah, you can, yes. Um, I think that's the wrong time to do a switch like that, you know. And, and as I say, it's only a, a six-minute download, so it's not like they've gone into any great detail about how to do this or the psychology behind it. And as anybody who's watched this review show before will know, I absolutely hate I it. Like it oh, yeah, me too. I absolutely hate it like when people put products out there and they don't give you all the information that you need to do the best job that you can do with this and i think that doing that switch at that point is absolutely the worst time to do the switch because people they've just seen this incredible change you know you're now reaching into your pocket and then you're doing this switch it's it's just not the right time it's absolutely not the right time um so I don't think this can be done close up. And I think that the trailer was a little bit deceptive with that because it shows a, a, a clip of, of the guy just like, you know, walking around outside and doing this and then giving the kid the, the egg and being a bit jump cutty. I don't think that's going to work. Now, the other... Yeah. What you could do, maybe, because I have been thinking this through, you could take you could you could take the dollar bill out, put the wallet away, steal the egg, do the thing, come back, do the switch. But yeah, I was just about to say that it's very good for a kid show. Here is where I think this would work brilliantly is in a kid show, and I'll tell you where it would work in a kid show. Um, so I actually do in my kid show egg bag. And rather than using a normal egg, I use a Kinder egg. And what I've do done is, I've, yeah, I do. I've got a, I've got a, um, a blown egg. And what I've done is, I've wrapped Kinder egg packaging around it, and so on and so forth. Silly Billy. Not silly Billy. It's amazing. The kids love it. I talk about how you know, as a kid, I used to love eating Kinder eggs and blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. I know you do. And uh, and let me show you a trick. And I go into it. I've got a whole presentation. Um, the point is, I think this would be an incredible way to open up that routine. So you have a kid come up on stage with you. You show this bag. The bag is completely empty. Obviously, it's loaded with your Kinder egg for uh, egg bag. But you show your egg bag completely empty. And you give the kid the bag and you get them to hold it there. And you say, have a look inside. Is the egg there? No. Have a look in there. Is there, is there an egg there? No. And then you come over to your other side of the stage, which is where your table is. And you reach in and take out a dollar bill. Now, even in England, you go, this is money. Uh, you know, this is American money because Kinder Eggs, you know, they were originally made in America. You could come up with a presentation or something to, uh, to cover the fact that it's American money. And then you go, who likes eggs? Everyone shout the magic words, eggs. Boom, you've got that instant change into the egg. Or well, maybe you say, everybody shout Kinder Eggs. Exactly. But now you don't need to have that examined. Now you do a vanish of that thing straight away. So you put it into the other hand, you immediately do a vanish, you go back into the table to pick up the magic wand, tap the hand, put the magic wand away, you've ditched the egg, the egg disappears, it's now invisible, you throw it through the air, you get the kid to catch it, they reach into the bag, they pull out the Kinder Egg themselves, and now you're into the routine. So now you then say, well done, I'll give her a big round of applause. Well, they don't need to catch because the egg's already in there. They don't need to catch it, it's an invisible egg, it's fine. They could, they had, the egg's already loaded in the bag. Yeah. So all they have to do is just grab the corner of the bag and do that, as in the routine. And then this egg flies through the air invisibly. They reach in, they take it out. 
What a great way to open up the egg bag routine. Like, what a great way to open up the egg bag routine. So I think this is brilliant for a kid's entertainer uh, or anybody that does family shows or even, you know what I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't rework that presentation for the egg bag into, um, you know, into a, a show for adults or, you know, at least a family show, you know, Talk about a story. Hey, how did I get into magic? Well, when I was a kid, I, I used to like uh, stealing chocolate eggs. Um, you know, I used to go down to the kitchen when my mum and dad were asleep and I'd take a chocolate egg and I'd a little bit like you do. Uh, and, um, you know, go, go into it there. I mean, from a presentational point of view, there's a lot of ways of doing it. So the point is, this is not a close-up item, in my opinion. It's, the angles are too problematic for it and you, have, you can't have it examined unless you do a switch. And it'll be a difficult thing to switch and it'll take place at just the wrong time. I do not think this is a close-up trick. However, for a kid's show, for a family show, even if you're not going to go into an egg bag routine, even if you don't do an egg bag routine, you could just use an egg bag for that one moment. Just show the egg, show the bag, it's completely empty. Yeah. They hold on to the bag, you take a dollar bill, it turns into an egg, you tap it, it becomes invisible, you throw it and they catch it in the bag, and then that's it, that's the end of the trick. Even just doing it like that. And if you don't have an egg bag, do it with a change bag. Show the change bag empty, put it back in, and you've already got the egg preloaded in there. Give the egg, give the change bag to the kid, blah, 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 reach in, they take out the egg. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. I think that's where it's gonna be used. I was going to give this a bad mark, I'll be honest, I was going to give it 50% because thinking of it as a close-up yeah, magician, yeah. well I was, if it was just for close-up, if this was just it's some, kid show. but for a kid's show, I'm going to give it a higher mark. So here's the thing, if you are a close-up magician, I would give this 50%. It is not going to work and in a close-up close environment. If you're a kid's entertainer, yep. I would give this 99%. I think I this is brilliant. I would give this 99 and 3 quarters. 99. Do you know how difficult that's going to be to put on the graphic down there? Fair enough. Okay, no, no, no yeah, you've said it now. You've said it now. 99 and 3 quarters. Uh, if you're a kid's entertainer, it's super visual. The kids would really buy into it. Yeah. It's something that the kids yeah. like. Kids love Kinder eggs. Kids love Kinder eggs unless they're allergic to chocolate or they don't like chocolate. It's they're sweet. allergic to chocolate. Yes. Generally, kids love Kinder eggs. Uh, it's super visual. I've got a friend that's allergic to chocolate. Really? Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and also, the other place that I should mention, if you're a TikTok magician or a social media magician and you want to do stuff for social media, man, this kills. This kills and this kills hard because this would look amazing on social media. So it's very dependent on where you want to perform this. Close-up magicians do not apply. Kids entertainers, family entertainers, social media magicians, this is going to be worth every single penny. And that's another review show in the bag. And that's another review show in the bag. Thanks. That is another review show in the bag. Guys, thank you very much for watching once again. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. Do you like the tricks? Do you not like the tricks? Which is your favourite? Have you got any of these yourself? Which ones would you recommend? Do you agree with our reviews or disagree with your reviews? I would love to know. I might disagree with your reviews. But Thanks. we both get different ones sometimes. We do. That's well, true. We did, on this one, we did 77 and 77. Yes, we did. So there you go. We're very uh, close on will you shut up? <laughs> anyway, guys, do me a favour. Make sure if you want to see more videos like this, you like the video, subscribe to the channel and you leave a comment down below. Also, uh, if you want to follow Ryland, he is The Kid Magician on YouTube. Just type in Ryland The Kid Magician and he'll come up. Make sure you subscribe to his channel as well. Uh, and also... Um, let us know if there's something that you want to see us review, leave us in the comments down below. The reason we reviewed Celebrity yes. Freak, leave, leave the comment in the review, in the comments down below. The reason we reviewed Celebrity so early is because loads of people asked for a review on it. So if there's something you want to see us review, please let us know. And other than that, we will be back next Wednesday with another Craig and Ryland's Magic Review Show. And I'm going to be back tomorrow flying solo without my tag team partner. I'm going to be here at nine o'clock with the Talk Magic, six o'clock with a live and two o'clock with a short so i'll see you again thanks very much for watching my name's craig my name's Riley. see you again take care bye everyone Bye bye.